Hello, Renee Vermont here. You guys, I started it now because she's looking. Uh, when I think about all of what the narcissist takes from us, I get very aggravated. It infuriates me. It infuriates me because it's not just what they take from you in terms of your time, energy, and effort. Money, many of you have given away money to them and, and all this business. But when I was processing the specifics of how and what went down, I became more and more frustrated as I realized that with each thing he took, it would represent something that I have to work to get back for myself, right? Let's just do a short list. Your self-esteem, oh please, of course they take that. That's like the first thing they squish. I swear they regard it like boot camp in the army where they say they strip you down to nothing and they build you back up in their image or whatever they do. That's kind of what the narcissist does. Sure, they love bomb you. Of course they do. They're trying to reel you in. But once they do, one of the first items is like a checklist, I swear. In devalue is knock them down a few pegs. Don't let them be too comfortable. Put her in her place. Let her know she's not that special. It's like the opposite of love bombing. That's how they start out devalue. They now have to hit you at your self-esteem. Now, you were vulnerable in the first place to get into this situation, and now you have your self-esteem knocked down. A bunch of pegs. Depending on how long you last with a narcissist, it can be a bunch of pegs. So now couple that with the vulnerability you already had inside you to connect with this person to begin with. Where does that leave you? You have to work on that. You're left with a mess when they when they go. And I made a video on that. I think it was called They Left a Mess or something. But they, it's not the two that I chose, I don't think. But um, in the corner today, it's thumbnail. But they, they do leave you a mess. And that is one of the areas that you're left to pick up the pieces. And you don't even know where to begin. You don't feel like sleeping right. You don't feel like eating right. You don't feel like exercising. You don't feel like seeing friends. You don't feel like seeing... All of those things can have an effect on your psyche, your self-esteem, and they take that and it aggravates me. It aggravates me. Our confidence, and then I'm going to get into what, what I, what, how I got to the point that I was like, they're not taking one more thing. Our confidence is built in with that self-esteem and they definitely, definitely are on a mission to not have you have any confidence in yourself. That's where the comments like, you look fat in that come up. Or why do you have to be so stupid? Oh, I heard a spouse call another one stupid. One relationship I knew more times in front of people. More times than I could count. The word stupid out loud in front of people and you're married. Can you imagine? Maybe you can. You might go, oh yeah, I can imagine. That'll kill your confidence. And in front of your children that you might even have together. How about that? Now you have to act like a confident, all-knowing parent. I'm trying to keep her in the camera shot. I know some of you miss her. Stay here with mama. You're trying to be the parent, the authoritative figure, and your narcissist partner, spouse, whatever, is cutting you down in confidence and self-esteem every chance they get in front of your children, now you're going to dig yourself out of that hole. Can you imagine that work? I'm sure you can. Again, I keep saying, can you imagine? They 100% take our ability to trust. Done. Our ability is gone. It's gone. And that is a tough one to rebuild. And many of us are still working on it, me included. I used to trust right away. But see, I look at that as a good thing, that I, I didn't lose my ability to trust. I don't think I lost it. But it's definitely hindered it and taught me to wake up 
And not everyone is as good as my papa or my brother or has the intentions that I would consider honorable. There are people we've learned that do not have your best interest at heart. But that ability to trust is a tough one to win back. These are all different things they take from us. They take our happiness. I've had many of you say to me, and I was the same way, I was happy before the narcissist. I had a great life. And da -ba I, I had things going in the right direction, and everything was copacetic, and then boom, it all fell apart. Because the longer you stay with a narcissist, the longer and the more opportunity they have, the longer time they have to take. And therefore, you may end up giving away more and more and more. And they'll take and take and take until the well runs dry or you cut them off or, okay, so we're going to get to that in one second. Our health. They take our health. Some of you are suffering. And I was there. I was stressed. I was at wit's end. I was not sleeping right. I was not eating right. I was not taking care of myself. And it, it showed. I think it definitely shows. I look back to the beginning of this channel, during which time I was still in the thick of many a thing. And I didn't look well. I didn't look well. And I remember the days of filming, other days, and I was like, you were crying all night that day. You were upset that day. You da -ba -ba. They take our health. We're a wreck. I'm a wreck. I was a wreck the whole time. And you might feel that way. I'm a wreck all the time. That's not good for your health. Now, I don't think my numbers were in, impacted, meaning blood pressure, cholesterol, things like that. But you're not telling me that some people's cannot be or might not be. Stress? Biggest cause of many things. And they stress us out. So they take all this, right? This is just to name, name a few. They take all of this, leaving us to build it back up. And we've made videos on that, haven't we? About building yourself back up. But there was a point. Now I'll get to my point. <laughs> there was a point at which I decided, and you have to decide this, there's no way he was going to be taking one more thing from me ever. And there was no way he was taking my outlook away. Like, that was very important to me. I felt like my outlook on the future, it's like it's very often the last thing we have is our outlook for the future. And some of us have a hard time picturing any kind of happiness at all after the experience with a narcissist, right? It's like hard enough to picture the future. And that's unfortunate. But once we, we build through that and we are able to see, I mean, I think we can flip that around in time with the work you start to see but I think you can I mean they took so much while they were with us in my opinion they don't get any more they took enough while you were keeping company with them there's he was certainly not going to take from my future when he wasn't even any longer here no no bloody way. And I told myself that. So one of the things about the future is all of the things we mentioned also are in the future. Self-esteem, confidence, ability to trust, happiness, health, of course. And, and I was going to get those back. I was determined to rebuild every department that he depleted. But also the outlook for the future. I said, no way. Uh-uh. I still plan on being myself. Not so trusting. But I'm not losing who I was. I'm not becoming cynical. I'm not. I am employing and will always and forevermore, oh my God, a certain amount of observation before action. 
I will move at a snail's pace forever, but I'm not losing myself. I do not want to become a hopeless, cynical, I'll never go out there again, I'll never trust again, there's no way. No, you still have a life to lead. They don't get that. Don't let them get that. Then what did they do? They got a victim in you and that's it. They squashed you like a whack-a-mole for the rest of your life. No. You pop, oh, look. The, you popped up. They whack a mold you. But guess what? They're gone now. The hole is open. You can come back up out of the ground. Look around. Start making friends. Start talking to people. You don't have to stay down there and there. No. And that's what I feel they do. They take everything, but I decided no way are they taking the future too. Do not let them have one more thing. It is your life anyway, whether they're in it or not. If they're still in your life, you still have a life. And you can do plenty and experience plenty independently and find your joy if you cannot leave them and you can quietly start to build up all of these ways that they took from you you can take a class you can start meeting with friends if he doesn't like that i know it's terrible but some narcissists are extremely controlling about who you see make it be family members but get yourself out of an isolated place which many times with a narcissist we're isolated we stay home we don't want to leave the house Get yourself on the phone with people again. Find yourself things to do, hobbies. Ride your bike. Go for a walk. Listen to music. Do whatever you need to do to get back your health and happiness. But for the love of Blanche, Henry, and Harry, do not let them get one more second. Especially if they're no longer with you, they get nothing. Nada. Zilt. Zero. Zip. Rien. They get nothing. They're not even with you. So you don't even have them in your space anymore. And you think I was going to let him dictate what my future was going to be like? Why? Because I was hurt? Was I broken? Did it kill? Was it hard to get up? Did it feel impossible? Did I cry? Did I sing Gladys Night in the Kitchen? Uh-huh. All of it. All of it. But then I stopped because I said to myself, okay, Renee, that's enough. He doesn't get the rest of your life. He got a little bit. You stumbled, you fell, you cried, you went through your things, you go through your thing, you do your thing, Renee. This is what I would say to myself. Now wipe yourself, you know, dust yourself off, dry your eyes, and realize that you have a life to live. Maybe you have kids. So you still have to be there for them, you know? Like, you still have to be there for them. You still have to be, and you want to be a light for your children. You want to be happy, and I don't mean fake, I don't mean act happy. I believe kids should see your honest See as much as they can. They don't need to know negative things. But it's a tricky line. But you need to find your positive inside so you can be there and show your children strength. Because, of course, children learn what they see, not what you tell them. So if they're seeing you vulnerable, if they're seeing you not be able to pick yourself up, if, you're see, if they're seeing you never trust anybody, being cynical, not going out, having a down th look on life, doesn't matter if you're lecturing them with the most positive Paul Harvey, Wayne Dyer, Oprah Winfrey lectures in your mind. It doesn't matter what you're telling them. Children learn what they see. So if you have been in that spot where you just feel like you can't even imagine a future that would be, you're going to have a future whether you're ready or not. Your future is tomorrow. It happens every minute. Next minute is a future. Only you have control for the outcome for the rest of your life, for the outlook and the outcome and, the, and what happens and, and how you 
navigate these waters ahead of you without the narcissist should you have just had a separation or you're thinking of that. You still have yourself to think about. You have to go forward and pay that proper mind and nurture that. You know you deserve it. Don't even. Don't even. We've talked about that. You're worthy of it. Yes, you are. And yes, it is possible to find happiness in the future. And that doesn't mean a person. Stop thinking that way. I hear that all the time, especially from my younger friends. They, they equate, I'll find happiness if I find the person. I'm the happiest person I know and I don't have a person, a, a romantic partner. Your happiness has nothing to do with if you find a person. You might say, well, what do you mean? I'm lonely. I'm sa-. I get that too because I know those people too. I know one person, not going to be happy unless they met. They did. They're happy. Okay, fine. Couldn't find a happy place alone. I know there are some of you like that. Not everyone's like me. I get that. But it took a lot of work to be happy alone. It didn't just happen. I had to make specific choices. And one of them was stop the power they have and take the power back. Take the power back to build up everything they took. Take the power back to not any longer give them anything, whether you're with them or not. And take the power back to absolutely seize the notion in your mind that regardless of whether or not you're with them, your future is not bleak. You can make it be positive and live your life. As long as you're not cynical, downtrodden, and pushed so far down that you can't rise up out of that whack-a-mole game. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And you have to. You have no choice. Even if you don't have children, I don't care. This is your life. You have no choice. You're not going to be down in that hole for the rest of your life because of the experience with a narcissist. Rise up. Go have tea. Sit outside. Enjoy the sunshine. Start there. I just wanted to mention it. Thank you so much for joining us. Please go ahead and hit sub, like, and share, and I'll see you next time.